All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how to generate the desired vehicle operating conditions, characteristics, whatever you want to call them, based on the induction machine. So we have our two region thing where we have the constant force, the constant power regions, um, field weakening, all these concepts we saw with the DC machine. But in this case, we want to look at how can we achieve something similar using the induction machine. So we'll start with an overall block diagram model. We'll look at a few equations here and there. We'll look at where this entire thing comes from because, again, if you're trying to generate this in some type of simulation or if you're trying to implement it even in reality, it's, under it's important to understand how the whole thing ties together. So we'll start with the block diagram. So the overall control is, is something like this. So you have, you'll have some reference signals coming in. You'll have some relationships, I suppose, and you'll have some additional blocks. And then maybe we can, can draw this a little bit bigger because it'll kind of encompass a couple of things here. But this, and at the output you'll have your three phase currents, right? So you'll have ISA as a reference, ISB reference, and ISC reference, right? What's this? This is your torque command. So you're going to give a torque command. The torque command is going to be multiplied by 2 over P in order to get your command for the machine. This will be TE star. This is then multiplied by 2 over 3, 1 plus sigma R over LM. And I think I've made this too small. So maybe we can make it a little bit larger. So 1 over I, M, R. I'm giving a subscript B because that's rated. If you recall, we had a convention where we said anything with the subscript B is rated. So that's rated. Uh, this thing here is a limiter or a saturation block, if you want to call it that, depending on what you're using. I guess we can say limiter. It limits the actual current, and this is ISQ, right? All right. Next, on the other side, we have, we have a speed command, right? We have a speed, well, command, I guess, if you want to call it, eh, we can call it a command. Um, but essentially, this will Go through this block and then so here you have omega m here you have your torque speed characteristic and this torque speed characteristic we've seen in the past a number of times it's the same thing so you'll have some break point there constant here and then it falls off like that except in this case and again i've made this too small but in this case what we're doing is we're saying, saying that this is I M R sub B. This is omega B. The output of this is the reference for I M R. This is a block of one, and the reason we're giving a block of one is to distinguish this from I S D star, just so it's more consistent for notation purposes, I guess. This is omega m. And I guess we don't really give an omega m command is why I was hesitating to calling it a command, but uh, I mean, technically, I guess it's kind of command to the system, even if we don't control it. And here you'll have at the bottom, I mean, this is going to be a pretty large block diagram, I guess. But here at the bottom, you have you have your machine model because your machine model has to generate like this angle row has to come from somewhere and you'll have essentially here you'll have three currents coming in and these three currents coming in are ISA, ISB, ISC and those are the three actual currents not <clears throat> not the references 
you have some block here, ABC, the DQ, and you'll have, and I'm going to simplify this, I'm not going to draw the entire thing like, I, like we have in the past, uh, since that isn't available in another video, and if you haven't, I'll link that video if you haven't seen that already. But I'm going to just say that this is equation 9 and equation 10 from the previous um, videos that we've seen, and I'll write the equations at the bottom after just so you know what they actually are. Um, but this is, again, this is an est these are estimated variables, right? So, I mean, you have to estimate all of these things because these are based on some feedback. You're doing this calculation in your, in your, uh, in your controller, basically, this is a model of the machine. This is not necessarily the machine itself, because you're trying to estimate. You're trying to estimate. After all of this is all going to be done, you're going to take rho, and I'll draw a little tilde on top of it for estimation. But that's the thing to note is that this is for the purpose of, of control and, and in your programming. So you can't expect these numbers to be perfectly the same variables, and these are not the same variables. They are estimates. Uh, so this is, for instance, LM, this is an estimate of LM, this is an estimate of sigma R, this is an estimate of R, R, and those go into that equation as well because they're used in that equation. The output of this equation is omega. You can integrate that, and then that would be fed out here. So this is an integrator block. I guess we can even call it 1 over S if we want. Let's use 1 over S, it just looks neater anyway. The one over s is your integrator. This is omega. This is the supply frequency, remember. And this might be useful at some point somewhere. And the outputs of these equations that we're going to use, maybe, or that we should have access to, I guess, is or are, um, whatever I guess we can label those after. And one last thing is that this DQ obviously needs to have access to that angle as well. So what are these quantities here? These quantities here are estimates for omega, not omega, S, just omega, uh, T, M, and again, these are based on the equations, lambda, R, and then I, M, R. These are all estimates of those equa of those quantities. And so we can basically say that all of this, um, I guess even till here, this whole thing we can say is the machine model. And that thing at the top is your, it's basically, um, how you generate ISQ, and this is ISD based on that. So again, we see ISQ and ISD are used to, care, uh, to, to regulate or control the torque and the speed, respectively. So this is your machine model. Now, the tilde, like I said, on all of these denotes the estimated variable, and if the machine parameters are known, then uh, your estimate will be the actual rotor flux. But in a lot of cases, we don't know the actual machine parameters, but we can apply some estimation techniques to determine what they actually are. Um, but why don't we also, just for the sake of complete uh, completeness, I guess, you can say that, I mean, equation 9 and 10, equation 9 and equation 10, just to kind of refresh you on what these are, R D I M R is by D T I guess is equal to minus one over tau R I M R plus one over tau R I S D and then omega slip we called it is equal to one over tau R I S Q over I MR, and remember that omega slip is equal to omega minus omega R. So that's what we have inside that equation 9 and 10 box, right? Okay. So, then based on this diagram and the previous block diagrams and all the things that we've seen so far, we can say that we can kind of relate this to our torque speed characteristic. 
that we want to achieve. And so what does that actually look like in terms of equations and these piecewise functions that we've seen in the past? So based on the previous block diagrams, we can see that Tm is equal to 3p over 4 Lm over 1 plus sigma r Imr Isq. And I mean, alternatively, I guess you can say that if you go the other way, you can see that Isq is equal to Tm star 4 over 3p 1 plus sigma r over Lm 1 over Imrb. And that's the base magnetizing current. So the reason I'm showing this is because this equation here is essentially how you generate Isq here. Right? That's where this 4 over 3 comes from. So this is, I'm just lumping all this together uh, and calling it Isq in this case here. But really, in the chain of the, the block diagram, you can see that that's where it comes from. So, you can see that Tm is equal to Tm star times Imr over Imrb. Right? So, that's a kind of um, relationship we can observe. So we have some other things too, but we have, we also have to keep in mind that we have these torque speed characteristics to follow, right? So we have that, however, all of despite all this being true, we have that IMR is equal to IMRB and IMRB, and this has to be omega B over omega M as omega m is less than omega b, and then omega m is greater than omega b. That should be, not m. And again, omega b is the base speed of the machine, right? So as omega m increases, you expect this current to decrease, because again, it's, a, it's an analogous thing to field weakening, essentially. Um, and so, Based on this, you know that Tm is going to equal the torque reference in this case, but will equal the torque reference times times omega b over omega m in this case, and this is omega m less than or equal to omega b. This is omega m greater than or equal to omega b. And also we know that the power Pm is equal to Tm times omega m, and just based off of the previous um, piecewise equation, this is going to be Tm reference times omega m, and this will be Tm reference times omega b. And so you can see that this is the constant power region when omega m is greater than or equal to omega b, because this omega b times Tm star is constant, of course, and omega m less than omega b this is not constant, it increases linearly, which is which is exactly what you expect. You expect the power to increase linearly and then go flat like this, which is precisely what this is telling us. So, what did we do here? We looked at this model, and again, this model is useful for simulation, it's useful for programming, it's useful for calculating these parameters. And then we looked at this machine model here. We kind of said that we this is an estimating model, and if you know the parameters, and they're not just rough estimates, then you can say that everything is perfect and this will follow its rotor. The, 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 the uh, machine flux, uh, or sorry, the, 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 well, the machine rotor, the rotor flux angle will follow um, or will be equal to rho, right? So th if there's an error in the estimation, then usually what happens is you have some small error between the two and there's always some compensation going on and there's always some difference in the actual rotor flux angle versus the estimated. If it's if that's not the case then they'll be lined up perfectly and you'll end up having um, the actual rotor angle flux in your calculations. Again, these are I mean, small little details we can live with, or small little deviations I should say, that we can live with um, in most cases. We did all of that, and then we looked at these equations. This is where these, where, the, where all this model comes from. And nine and ten, like I said, are these two equations here, and these are from a previous video. And then we kind of looked at the relationship between the torque and 
the well the machine's actual torque and the sort of imposed uh, conditions that we want right so TM should have these uh, have these uh, characteristics and the power should have these so these resemble our our known torque speed characteristic for instance this is a constant torque when it's below the base when it's above the base the torque decreases inversely proportional to um, the increase in omega m and then the power here we see that increases up to constantly up to a certain level and then after that level it becomes constant here as we've seen in the past so with that said i hope this was helpful if you have any questions leave them in the comments below like and subscribe to support the channel and we'll see you in the next one